Correct. The question is what Dat Moshe Yisrael means. It's a, it's, a pe- it's a question of whether this is the communal norm. Could Dat Moshe Yisrael could deem this is the accepted way to do this? And one has to ask how honest it is to say that, and you could come on, come up on either side of that argument. If you came up on, it doesn't feel like this is Dat Moshe, and I want to be honest in that regard, you could say, before God, before my community, before my family, you could do that. You could say, in this Kedat Kihilatenu Hakdosha, you could do something that would be true and honest and real and not quite so... Um, let me, by the way, the very notion of Hare'at, recognizing that in phrase itself might not necessarily be in this scenario. You might read vows of Shukaput that would be, uh, you know, similar in that, but it wouldn't be necessarily that phrase anyway. But doesn't Dabashir Yisrael mean the whole Jewish, the whole ritual, the whole legal Jewish thing? You're arguing for one side. I'm not disagreeing with you. You could say both sides of this argument. Meaning, you could say, according to the laws of Moses and Israel, is limited to what is actually accepted by the majority as the laws of Moses and Israel. And you could say, no. I, I, I want to make it possible for people functioning on both sides of the aisle. Um, I want to end with only, with just one hetero, I'm sorry, homosexual flourish, which I love. Please turn if you have your materials, and then we're, we'll be really, really good. It is on page, it's the Ishbitz. Hold on. Three. Three? When you get a chance and you're alone in the car or with your friends or on the train or whatever, you can read Martin Buber. It's really beautiful. It's about otherness and relationship. But what's great about the Ishbitz is this. He wants to find a metaphor for Azer Kinecto, for someone who is a partner and opposite you. And his model for this is the relationship between uh, Rabbi Yochanan and Reish Lakish, two rabbis mm. in the yeah. Rabbi Yochanan and Reish Lakish. Rabbi Yochanan was infatuated with Reish Lakish. The story is a really famous one. It's also in the book. If you want to take a look there. What's interesting is is that is that when they they fought and struggled with each other, and when Reish Lakish dies, they give Rabbi Yochanan another partner to study with. And the partner says yes to him all the time. Oh, you're so smart. Oh, that's so smart. And Rabbi Yochanan is infuriated and said, Do you think, I, don't you think I know I say good things? <laughs> no, I love Reish Lakish because he challenged everything I had to say and the world got clearer. And at the end of his life, because he couldn't find a partner who challenged him, he died. He went crazy, right? The image for the Azer Kinecto the image, the model of marriage in this Hasidic man's mind is the relationship between two men who challenge each other. As it says, that a person, that, uh, uh, for Adam there should be a helper, and a support, but also against him. It's like the student and the teacher, Ben Lakish Neged Rav Yochanan the Havi Makshile Kavdal Pushata Umefarekwa. That it's like this relationship where he would ask Rav Yochanan would ask 24 questions, and Rav Yochanan would become smarter, wiser, and both of them would grow in learning and in wisdom. But the English is the right thing. No, the English is a different test. Um, uh, yes. I honor and welcome teaching from the tradition and opposing ways for healthy human relationships. I just hunger for some feminine models. I don't need feminine in them. I just hunger for models from women's sources. I know they exist. I don't take away from you. I honor what you're doing. I just have to name in this space because of just the shared history of male entitlement and how men have to tell me how to be all the time. I, I can hear beyond it to the wisdom and the humanness, and there's always a filter of, again, again, a model where I must copy the men. So, just for my you tradition, I just lament the loss of the women models. I lament them. I know we're creating it, but I wish to own the lament of the loss. Correct. And I don't disagree with you at all. There, I looked, by the way, in my book, for evidence of 
erotic connection between women in recorded in the tradition, and I have to tell you, there is very, very, very little. It has been blotted out. Well, that's why. Oh, no, no, no. Of course it's been blotted out. <laughs> of course it's been blotted out, as most homosexual uh, um, um, uh, relations, even between men, have been blotted out. And of course, the discourse of women itself. But this is this is the legacy of human yeah. society yeah. until 150 yeah. years ago. So we all are still. But, but I just want to make it clear that the entire structure of this conversation was about restoring the moon to her former glory, which means that men are going to get married under a sign about women's equality. That that's the whole point of Kiddush Lebana for me, is that until women are equal in power and in voice to men, there will be no, there will be no acceptance of men living together in love. So I, I want to underscore that that has been the fundamental commitment, right, of this entire kind of conversation. Thank you very much.